You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is a Freaker Friday. Or at least once I checked the calendar, I saw that it is. Yeah, it's been one of those weeks and it's, mmm, yeah. Oh, well. I'm Grammy Mary and I am coming to you here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, and a lot of other R aluminum places, as well as... Excuse me, got all choked up. The RLM Spreaker channel, and wow, just everywhere. We're everywhere, and I keep seeing all this weird stuff going on over here on Twitter. What? Elizabeth Warren cannot prove she's Native American merely by taking a DNA test? Ah, I feel bad. I feel bad. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out over here on Twitter. I really do appreciate it. I have lost a couple of stalkers, apparently. Oh, darn turned a corner a little bit too fast that's okay it's okay it's all good oh thank you ever so much rob works (laughs) he fired up the bubbler bubbler yay okay uh let's see i'm gonna go ahead and close twitter because i think i've i've picked it clean enough i do have some fun things from twitter though uh, over here on Fakie Book, don't really see a whole heck of a lot of action going on, and there's a reason for that. I'll get to that here in just a little bit as well. Over here on Freedoms Network, thank you, Grimner, for putting me out over here on Freedoms Network. I really do appreciate it, hon. You the bomb, man. I also see that the lovely T.D. Sanders is over here, as well as Michael and uh, Rob. So, hi guys, how you doing? Yeah, and I waved at my computer screen like I'm total Nimrod. Huh, I have to be retrained. I wasn't here on Wednesday because I spent time with my mom, but... Hmm, (coughs) excuse me, choked up. Can't help it. Um, over here on Minds. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody over here on Minds. Hope you're having an absolutely awesome week. Haven't been checking you out much this week, but... I plan on doing more checking as the days progress. I mean, going to have to give me a little bit because I got things to do, but I will get caught up. Huh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And finally, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Because this is the one that I pretty much pay attention to because, yeah, um, I'm just, I'm just not... I'm not real good at keeping track of a whole bunch of chats at once. I just got to say. So, over here in the RLM, right up top, Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Hey, Barman, thank you, hon, for tweeting me out and, and sharing me all over the place and scaring the hell out of the rest of the general population. I also see Grimner is here, as well as the lovely Moose Girl, and I do believe they will be on later this evening with the Freaker's Ball. Unless Moosey has a life again, and then it will be balls to the wall, or maybe nothing. I don't know. Things are up in the air, but be sure to stick around. Check things out. What? I got dingers going on. Why am I dinger dingering? What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I'm glad you're still stalking. <laughs> Oh, you goofball. And you're welcome. The lovely Kayla has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Kayla. And you are welcome. Um, Let's see. Where else am I at? Oh, yeah. Back to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's see. Beth Z is over here as well as BTC Bob and Chal Sedoni. Double dipping a Chloe going on. Chloe, Chloe. Do you hear an echo? It's just a repeat, hon. Oh, no, that's free and slave that's always here in the repeats. Pete and repeat, sitting on a bench. I also see I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe. It's, I've been, it's been a weird week. (laughs) 
I'll just put that out there. Um, I've been here. You know, it's like the lights are on, but nobody's home. That's kind of the way this week has been. <laughs> I've been logged into the chat, but it's not like I've been able to titty chat. I've been, I've been busy. <sighs> and I tell you about that here in just a little bit. I gotta say, hey, first, so. Um, I be Don C is here. Hey, Don, how you doing? How's your lovely bride doing? And Java, 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 Java Doctor Two is here. Thank you, Java, for that link. I have it open. Hopefully, I will get to that here in just a little bit as well. I also see JJ's, my Scottish friend. Hi, JJ's. How's things in your world? I don't. I'm not going to ask about the kilt anymore because Flash just ruined that for me. Darn it all. Um. Let's see, where was I? Juana Taco. Mmm. Trust no one ate fish and is now a whale. Wow, dude. <laughs> I'm making spaghetti bake. I already got the, the ground chuck cooked. And I will be making the sauce and cooking the spaghetti and then baking it and cheesing it and yum. But that's when I get done tonight on the radio. So I'll have to wait a while. To eat. Damn it. Um, let's see. Where is I at? Juan a taco. Yeah. I'm see, I'm still having an ethnic meal spaghetti. But I'm Grammy ifying it, if that's a thing. Hmm. Hi, Mr. Bra, Mr. Bra, Woody. That's easier to say. Hi, Mr. Asmodius. How are you doing, sweetheart? I also see the lovely Kate is in the house. Hi, Kate. And rain, rain, rain. We need some rain out here. It is drier than a popcorn fart. We have been under a fire warning for, I think, the whole damn week. Um, RLM Fluky is here, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. I also see Rob Works, who was such a awesome dude and fired up the bubbler for me thank you rob i'm probably going to need a cybernetic hit of that here in a little bit trust no one who is feeling like a whale because he ate all the fish damn it did you go to long john's i saw that list of everything that you bought damn it it has been forever since i've been to long john's um beat all and by the way long john's is one of those things where it's like okay I got to, I got to, but it's just once in a while you get that craving. It's kind of like, um, oh, every once in a while I get a craving for spinach and I'll just sit there and eat a whole damn can of spinach. You know, one of those kind of things, you know, where you just get a hankering and you got to go tend to it. Uh, Beetle! Did I say that already? Hi, Colfax 101. I also see Dima is here. Ooh, pork chops and yams there. Ah, uh, mm, I have learned to acquire a taste for sweet potatoes, but I don't want them with all the syrupy crap on them. I just want a big sweet potato and put some butter and some salt and pepper on it, and I'm a happy little camper. I can do that. Or make sweet potato fries and put some seasonings on it, but I don't want none of that damn sweet shit on there. Yuck. Uh, Dima, Frumpy, 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 as well as Gooberzilla. Hi, Goober. I waved at you when you said hey, but yeah, my camera's turned off. Um, hi, Kozu. How you, hun? And the Miri B from Down Under. Oh, thank you, Grammy. You're such a sweet. You know, I'm actually, I may get to go to Long John's, um, next week. I'm going to be road tripping. But, in a minute. Hi, Moy. Moy, 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 Moy. As well as Poxified and Pompo Pond Sauce. And looky there, Slim Jim Flim is here. As well as Teddy, the cuddly one. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom, who did my intro for me. Once again, Phantom, thank you ever so much. That's truly awesome. By the way, hon, how's your cousin doing? It would be really nice if you could kind of pop me a, a, a message and let me know how she's getting along. I... I I was, I, she popped into my head earlier this week, and I thought, I need to ask him about that. So if you hear this, and if not, then maybe I'll have to actually log back into Crush and Run in the corner pocket and say hey to everybody and, and say, hey, Phantom, how's your cousin doing? Damn it. But, you know, that, that, that requires me pushing buttons. So, um... 
Old fashioned chastity belts. Oh, ooh. Mm. <laughs> I don't need one of those. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm hmm. So let's see. Where was I at? Oh, yeah. First things first. Let me get my big news, my quite literally earth shattering news. And it's traumatizing everyone else more than it's traumatizing me. But ah, I got laid off this week. <laughs> and and it's been, you know, I thought I would be semi-retired. You know, I, I would be able to, oh, hey, you know, I can chillax for a couple of days. And then I can get started on some projects. No, no. I mean, okay, let me tell you, let me tell you how this all went down, because everybody that I've run into, which is why I try not to go into town, because everybody's going, oh my God, oh my God, and it's like, oh, seriously, I need a way. Um, in any case, uh, Tuesday afternoon, um, well, Monday was kind of interesting anyway, because I was officially sharing my area with someone else, and it's like... I'm not thinking this is going to work very well. And I actually told her, mm, uh, this ain't going to work out real good. <clears throat> We're awful cramped in here. And I kept, you know, rearranging things and saying, there, I'm giving you a little more room. And, you know, because she had lots of shit. In any case, <clears throat> Tuesday, I get all my stuff done and I'm doing some cleaning. And, oh, yeah, I know, got laid. <laughs> got off, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys I love you guys um in any case um Tuesday afternoon uh the big boss came in and um uh, you know he's wandering around and chitty chatting with everybody and then at about a quarter after four I get called into the office and I'm like you know how you whether that music is there or not you hear it that Dun, dun, dun. Well, I heard that in my head. <laughs> and I walked into the office and he goes, I really hate to do this. And I'm like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I got laid off. And he said, you know, whatever you need to finish up, go ahead and take your time and finish it up. And, um, you know, you don't have to get all of your stuff out of here today. And I'm like, Wow. Wow, nothing like, uh, here's your coat, here's your hat, there's the door, don't let it hit you where the good Lord split you. <laughs> now, I am getting severance, and I've had people ask me, so how long have you been with them? Technically, with this owner, with this company, um, almost two and a half years. With this business... Um, my anniversary, w it would have been 20 years in, in August. So, putting that out there. Um, but, you know, I did tell a couple of people that, hey, if you have any questions or anything, just give me a call, no big deal. And I was trying to show them, this is where I keep this, and this is where I keep that. And the next day, uh, I stopped in to pick up a couple of things on the way down to see my mom, and it was like I had never been in that office. All of my stuff was moved, you know, my desk, and and it was gone, and it was rearranged, and it's like, wow, overachievers here, which, you know, it's one of those things where it's a reminder that none of us are uh, irreplaceable. Now, individual-wise, as in who we are, there will never be another like me, which that's a good thing. <laughs> but as for the job that I did, I did not lose my job. The job is still there. It's just someone else is doing it now. Um, but my mom freaked. She was all worried. And it's like, mom, don't worry. I'm going, I'm getting, I got a severance and I'm going to apply for unemployment. What the hell? I've paid in, they've paid in. I may as well milk it for a while. But I'm going to turn into a little farmer Grammy, I think. I've had more people contact me and say, so, 
Are you going to have time to like bake zucchini muffins and do this and do that? And wow, I absolutely love the tomatoes and the cucumbers that you grow. And are you going to start doing the farmer's market? Which may mean I will have to change. Flasher, you and I will have to talk. Uh, may have to change the time of the dork table on Saturdays. Because farmer's market during the summer is um, 8 a.m. to noon. So... Yeah, I would not be here <laughs> for the dork table, at least my time, because um, that would be an hour later. But this is all things down the road. For now, for right now, talk to my girls. I am going to visit the grandbabies next week. I will be coming back on Wednesday morning, though, so I should be back in time to do the rocket chair Wednesday night. So that should not be a problem. I will let Grimmy know if it does wind up being a problem, but it shouldn't be right now. Um, and um, then a week later, I will be going the other direction to the other daughter to see her and her daughter and her hubby and how they've gotten all moved into the new house and taking a day bed down to her and making room in my house. <laughs> So I'm going to be busy. Plus, I'm going to be, I've got uh, ginger and turmeric and horseradish roots that I'm going to be getting several pots going um, to get those started. So, And that's like a two-year process to get it going to where it will um, keep itself going. You know, keep, keep regrowing or whatever. But, yeah. So... Lots of things on the back burner and on the front burner and in the oven. And yeah, I'm going to be a busy girl. And here I'm supposed to be retired. <laughs> it's a forced retirement. But it's like, thank you. Thank you. Because actually, I had thought about just saying, you know what? I'm done. I can't do this shit. I'm glad I stuck it out. So now I get the severance and <laughs> unemployment. So hey, hey. Work it, work it, work it. I see you, Vinny. Vinny! And yes, Frumpy, now that I has my blanket fort, and you know what? I dug out my adult coloring books and my colored pencils, too, today. Yeah. Yeah, for those times when I'm just sitting on my butt, not doing nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I still have one crocheting thing to finish before I can actually, without feeling guilty, sit on my butt and not do nothing. Note I said without feeling guilty. That doesn't mean I don't sit on my butt and not do nothing, but it just means that usually when I do that, it's to sit down and just kind of catch a breather. And then next thing you know, I'm watching Netflix through my eyelids. So... <laughs> In any case, that's the excitement in my world. Um, yeah. I am self-employed, and that's not a bad thing. That is not a bad thing. Um, the the crazy, and where I want to go with this is that the wild and crazy thing is, y'all know how I am, and, and my whole universe, and, and changes, and, you know, you need to embrace, and all that other fun stuff, and I can't tell you how many people said, you know, maybe the universe is just letting you know it's time for a change, and some of them some of the people that told me that were like, holy crap, you, what? The receptionist at the dentist office, because I had a dentist appointment yesterday <laughs> to get my teeth cleaned, and I have two little bitty cavities that um, they're going to try and get me in before my insurance ends at the end of the month, bless their hearts. But his wife, I, I would have never, ever thought of her saying, you know, maybe this is just the universe's way of telling you that it's time for a change. And for every door that closes, another one opens. And I'm like, holy crap, you, that just came out of your mouth. Because she's, no, these people are very, very social, you know, like country clubber kind of people. And it blew my mind. And then I got to thinking, wow. It is infiltrating all levels of the socioeconomic strata because people that, you know, are not country club level, you know, like the those of us down here, us dirty breathers, basically, um, people like that have been saying that to me. 
Um, and I'd, I've never, like with Joyce, I've never said that to her. So it was like, this, this really is encouraging for me to hear other people that I would have never expected that to come out of their mouths to say something like that and say it with all sincerity. So there is hope for the world. There is hope for the world. And yes, the universe just opened another door and I'm walking through it. Actually, I'm just kind of going to where the river flows. And right now that river is flowing towards, you got a big garden you got to do, Grams, because you got some people that want to buy your produce. So, cash only basis. Because <laughs> if you ain't got cash, I got cans. I'm going to can it. So, <clears throat> actually, I'm not going to be that poopy, but hey. Going to be doing canning and dehydrating and, oh, I'm going to be a busy woman. So, uh, ta-da. Ooh, Vinny. Was you harassing someone when you whipped out your camera? I don't want you taking pictures of me. Hmm. So, it's, you know, for a DA to say that, honey, it's, you got to understand that uh, the Aboriginal people used to think that that was taking their soul away. DAs don't have those. So you don't have to worry about that going on. So, hmm, maybe they're afraid that, um, you know, you're going to steal what's left of them or you're going to expose that empty, vacant, soulless, whatever, whatever. A lot of times that most DAs that I know or have known in my life, um, yeah, are kind of scary like that. They, Their eyes are empty. I saw something really funny the other day on Fakey Book. Um, how many lawyer jokes are there? Uh, well, actually, there's only three. The rest of them are all true stories. Yes, Rob works. I will be Farmer Grams. <laughs> Yes, I will. So, let's see. Where do I want to go? Okay, fake. I want to get to this fake book one before I totally spaz it off. Because it's on Zero Hedge, so I don't know that I really get too involved in it. Because um, Zero Hedge is a little bit heavier reading than what I'd, I'm used to. Yeah. I, will, I like to be more lighthearted. Or maybe that's lightheaded. Or maybe it's both. I don't know. In any case, Facebook sees 24% drop in average time spent on site. Well, I know that I, for one, am um, accounting for some of that. And quite a few other people that I know are also accounting for some of that. Uh, yeah, fakey book is, yeah, honey, sorry. This is what happens when you try and become diabolical overlords. People start um, pulling away from you, backing off. But apparently, according to this, um, this article, while Facebook grapples with an explosion of overhead expensive regulations in Europe and possibly soon in the U.S., a staggering decline in traffic, black la or backlash over conservative purging and pedo questionnaires, which I saw some stuff about that, the pedophile bullshit, and it's like, what the hell? That is one of those questions that is like, this is a rhetorical question, right? Seriously? No, pedophiles should not be able to go on Facebook and start uh, trolling for youngins. You know, out in these parts, we don't cotton too like, much to that kind of shit. You know, you start messing with the little ones and we start messing with you. And you ain't gonna enjoy it. Sorry. Oh, and a former executive who went public in December with his tremendous guilt over helping to hook people on the internet crack that is social media. It's a Silicon Valley behemoth and it's now facing a new challenge. 24% drop in the average time spent on the site. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now the new numbers have been released that go through December, and the problem only seems to be getting worse. The updated data shows that Facebook's core platform lost 18% in time spent 
which is a huge change from a month before. Um, apparently, recent changes to Facebook's algorithms, which prioritized posts from friends and family over promotions, have been blamed for lower engagement, as Zuckerberg warned shareholders about in January. Perhaps that's why Zuckerberg and other insiders are dumping shares. Yeah, because it's a losing proposition. You know, there's a lot of other sites out there that people would much rather go to that don't have these little butthurt Nazis running around going, they said something that really hurt my feelings. YouTube's going to have the same damn problem. Just putting that out there as well, because I, I noticed uh, something the other day um, the Health Ranger got dumped from YouTube, and a few other uh, pages got dumped from YouTube. And it's, I mean, biggies, you know, like Infowars, that kind of stuff. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, oh, what the hell? What the hell? So I went and made sure that I could find my Vimeo password. <laughs> ah! You know what? They aren't the only one out there. Sure, they're the most well-known, but there are other sites out there that play videos. And, you know, if your policies are going to do that, people are going to stop supporting you. You're cutting your nose off to spite your face. Which, that's one thing that I think my former employer is going to find out. Because there's an awful lot of people in town and in this area, which is basically a tri-state area, that um, as news gets around and as I'm getting more text messages and people running into me on the street and going, hey, wait a minute here. Yeah. They're, uh, they're cutting their nose off to spite their face. We'll just put it like that. So, apparently Facebook hired 14,000 people working on community safety to prevent fake news. And uh, they will be at 20,000 people by the end of 2018. That is an awful lot of people. <clears throat> awful lot. Huge list. Okay, wait a minute. I got to see what's going on. Da, 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 da. Alphabet soup, they all suck. Yes, DAs all suck. Um, ew. Oh, mental image. I don't want that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Interwebs crack. Yeah, it is the interwebs crack. Um, by the Mighty Meth Spider. That is true as well. Hootie doody whaty. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, it is a huge list, Frumpy. Of, of different and you know I've had a lot of videos that I really really enjoyed and I as soon as I went to go listen to them again or whatever and found out they had been deleted it was like son of a bitch I knew I should have downloaded that thing you know I got I've got excellent hindsight <laughs> yes frumpy uh-huh the world is full of very short-sighted idiots. And, you know, that's the way you get to these nimrods, is you hit them where it hurts, in their pocketbook, on their bottom line. And, yeah, I see that on the macro and the micro of late. And it's it, things are going to get interesting. Which is why I'm really not heartbroken over this whole not no longer going somewhere else to work now I just work outside of my house or in my house and around my house um but because I've been I've been thinking about doing the the whole um being self-employed thing anyway and this was just that little added incentive <laughs> but yeah the people are not not happy and you know word of mouth is can be your best friend or your worst enemy and in these small farming communities out here especially when people find out how this has all progressed um yeah there's going to be some not so happy people 
and they will find other places to spend their money and that will hurt mm -hmm. so what's he doing to her ass Vinny God dandruff some of it itches okay I'm gonna put this over on fakey book too just because it's like oh yeah um Uh, let's see, I'm part of that 24%. Oops. So, now that I've gotten that out there, let me go to... This is one that Java Doctor sent to me. Oh, you know what? I think I'll save that one. Java, I'll save that for a little bit later because I do have a couple others that I want to get to real quick. Let's see. Check these out. Okay, so this is just just going to do a quick one on this one. I'll share the link for you. It's from The Blaze and David Hogue. Is that Hogue or Hog? Hoggy, hoggy, hoggy. He backs down from debate with InfoWars host Alex Jones, which, you know, I was almost, 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 you know, as soon as I saw that headline, thought, I'd like to see that. And then I got to thinking, no. I can't do Alex Jones's voice. I just, I can't. It's like listening to Dangleberry. After, after so many times, you just get to the point where it's one of those sounds that grabs you by the base of your spine and works its way up, and it's not good. It's just not good. Yes. Oh. That is true, Frumpy. That is true. Sometimes it takes a little while to understand. And, so, and you know, I'm, I'm still, still, I still have puzzle pieces falling into play. And it's changing how I viewed things as they transpired. So, yeah. It's, it's been an interesting week, let me tell you. And it's been one of those where, um... I have known, but it it was at the back of my mind. It wasn't until it came, till all those cobwebs made connections and it came up to the forefront that I went, I knew that. <laughs> it is, it's, you know, I was telling someone the other day, they said, God, you, you just know so much. And I said, I am so smart that if you were to put me on Jeopardy and everyone of the categories was things that only Grammy knows, I'd probably still lose. <laughs> Simply because I clutch under pressure when it comes to that. I never was a good test taker. And that, to me, you know, watching Jeopardy, I can kick ass. I really can when I'm watching it on the boob tube. But when I'm in the heat of playing Trivial Pursuit, brain fart. <laughs> It's like every time I get a question, you'd think I'd just walk through a doorway and my mind got wiped. I, and then when they say the answer, it's like, I knew that. <laughs> I, I admit it. I admit it. I have mind wipes from time to time. But, you know, I do have an awful lot of trivial stuff running around inside my head. <sighs> It's fun. In any case, back to this article from The Blaze. Apparently, David Hogg, Hogue, Hogg, Hogue, is very bold around those who agree with him. But now, the outspoken Flory, duh, survivor turned leftist hacktivist is wa uh, walking with his tail between his legs after he backed out of a debate with InfoWars host Alex Jones. If he's true in his conviction, wouldn't he be able to muster up enough oomph to challenge those that disagree with him? You know, if I were offered a chance to debate Alex Jones, I would really seriously be tempted to do so, but then I would have to have my ears plugged because his voice just irritates me. So, it's that... <laughs> I just, I can't listen to him. I just plain can't. I would debate him if it wasn't for the fact that I can't listen to him. He, he hurts my ears. Oh, well. 
Apparently, JewyTube is penalizing Jones for a video questioning the authenticity of the Florida tragedy and for assuming that Hogue is a paid crisis actor. The video by Jones titled David Hogue Can't Remember His Lines in TV Interview was removed by JewyTube for violating the video's pla video platform's policies. Ah, yeah, we said that that's fake news and therefore it's fake news and you can't do that, so we're taking it away. Nanny, nanny, boob, guess what? Cut that nose off. You got a little bit more left. You don't have that whole Skeletor thing going on yet. Huh. Apparently, this is what prompted Hogue to disparage the conspiracy theorist on Twitter, stating that he'd love to come on and clear some of this up. Hogue also called Jones a shit journalist. Okay, I can't argue with that. Um, who has no idea who Hogue is or what he does. That's right, honey. Nobody really knows who you are. Only and uh, possibly even you don't know who you are. Do you hear voices in your head? Oh, I can't really use that as criteria because I do too. But I like my voices. They're funny. And they usually encourage me. <laughs> Which is not necessarily a good thing either. In the end, Hogue backed out, but here's the brief Twitter exchange. And there is a... Oh, good Lord. Oh. And then there's a picture of fucking Alec. Oh. Okay. I'm just going to let you guys check it out. Because, wow, I scrolled down and I saw Alex Jones with um, no shirt on. <laughs> And it's like, you know, some things just plain can't be unseen. And, well, I, mm, where's my mental etch-a-sketch? I really, really need that right about now. Oy. Uh. Run away, little boy, run away. It's okay. Oh, hey, and you know what? It's ARG day. It's Happy Pasta Fairy and Holy Day. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. I think I'm going to do this one. You can't see me. I don't want to talk to you. You know, that's usually what little ones do. When they, they don't want to be confronted by the boogeyman, which I think Alex Jones would be a boogeyman. He, would, he scares me. Oh, okay, TD. Thank you, honey. I see you saying you... You'll listen offline. I hope you're staying warm and all that fun stuff because I saw the Nor'easter. I think Tom was the one that posted something about that. Tom W. said that it's just kind of hanging out over the Great Lakes. That's not cool. You know, quit dodging with the weather. You assholes don't know what you're doing. Cut it out. Oh, well. Time to move along. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, I did. I did see that, Frumpy, the video of the teacher who describes cops in full gear. Yeah. I did see that one. He's a hoagie boy. There you go. He's a hoagie boy. <laughs> He's kind of doughy. <laughs> okay, this next one is just entirely too fun. Now, it's from The Onion. Y'all know what to think about that. And initially, I came over here because I saw a link on Twitter about the world's oldest message in a bottle found on an Australian beach. And so I thought, oh, how fun, from The Onion. This should be cool. Which, you know, and then I started reading it and was like, well, yeah, this is, this is for real. I remember reading about this on another site on the interwebs. And it's on the interwebs, so it must be real. But they had a bunch of farcical, you know, like comment things. And I thought, uh, no, that's not, that's, that won't work for, for the radio. So I scrolled. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling, Grammy. Oh, well. In any case... <laughs> Um, I came across this one. Did you know that there is new evidence that reveals that ancient Greeks immediately regretted inventing theater? 
Well, you know, they probably, there was probably, you know, the, one of the oracles of Delphi that went, you do not wish to go there. I see in the future there will be many people with shiny things on their fingers and wrists and necks and ears and running around in either fully clothed or half naked and they will be self-congratulating and they will be praising themselves and scolding others while holding a statue and and no the Greeks did not listen they did not listen to the Oracle of Delphi that warned them about the Grammys and the Oscars and the <laughs> all that Horlywood shit. But I digress. In Oxford, England, apparently providing insight into the culture of early Western civilization, historians from the University of Oxford announced Friday the discovery of new evidence revealing that ancient Greeks immediately regretted inventing theater. Our research shows that directly after developing theatrical performances as a way to honor the gods during religious festivals, the people of 6th century Athens realized what a terrible thing they had done. This is according to research associate Hannah Brubaker, whose team of translators and anthropologists are working to catalog reams of writing in which classical Greeks confessed, excuse me, that the idea of a professional class of people wearing costumes and masks while standing on stage and performing stories was a horrendous mistake. <laughs> it appears that the Greeks almost immediately recognized that this new craft would create an entire sub-community community centered around the worst attention-seeking narcissists in their society and inspire a litany of terrible productions that they would all have to sit through. God, I didn't even read this, and wow, what I said is really true. <laughs> Apparently, the Athenians in particular, uh, being the most refined, sensitive, and sophisticated of the Greeks, instantly wished they had never conceived of theater in the first place. You guys let... Um, Pandora out of the box. It's y'all's fault. Brubaker added that several new findings suggest the ancient Greeks also lamented encouraging those prone to pondering life's unanswerable, unanswerable questions out loud to call themselves philosophers. Yeah. Yeah. See? See? The Greeks knew, but, you know, this is from the onion, so... Take it with a shaker of salt. <laughs> or maybe two all-beef patties. Don't go with the special sauce, though, okay? Because you never know where that came from. I don't trust that Ronnie McDonald. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun over here. Um. Oh, well, yeah. I would I would much rather stay at home and and watch a good sci-fi over a dinner party any day unless it's a dinner party that I'm doing you know and then I just invite select individuals and a lot of times we have a grand old time but it's not one of those stuffed shirt ones it's like yo I made a big batch of, batch of chili you want to come over and help eat it sure that's my kind of dinner party usually <laughs> We do not get out the fancy schmancy nothing. It's like bottles of beer for your beverage and whatever. Oh yes, Frumpy, we would no, we wouldn't have spaceships because you don't go to outer space. Outer space is anything, actually you do go to outer space, but you don't need a spaceship to do it because anything outside of your physical body is outer space and we did not go to the moon and we lost that technology too just ask them they'll tell you we lost the technology and we can't go back <laughs> NASA asses said so 
Oy. Too funny. Okay, so let's see. Where do I want to go now? Yes, we will go here to worldtruth.tv. Okay, I am so blessed to live just an hour away from Colorado as opposed to living in Colorado, although sometimes living in Colorado I think would not be a bad thing. But then you have to deal with all of the California transplants and uh, I think I'll I'll stay an hour outside of Colorado. <laughs> Thank you very much. But did you know that after legal weed, Colorado now takes steps to legalize, wait for it, magic mushrooms. Shrooms. <laughs> Less than six years ago, Colorado citizens tired of the war on drugs and wise to the near limitless benefits of cannabis made U.S. history by voting to legalize recreational marijuana. Now, this state could once again place themselves on the right side of history as they begin pushing for the legalization of magic mushrooms. Shrooms. <laughs> Paving the way for legalization is a group called Denver for Psilocybin. And they may soon have the go-ahead to get mushroom legalization on the ballot. Gathering at the steps of Denver City and County Building on Wednesday, the group chanting at times, Free the Spores, <laughs> I like that, met with city leaders about their push to decriminalize, decriminalize, I like that, psilocybin, also known as magic mushrooms. Decriminalization would mean reducing the penalty for possession of psilocybin mushrooms. Colorado decriminalized marijuana long before the drug became legal for medicinal and recreational use. Tyler Williams, one of the leaders of Denver for Psilocybin, spoke to Denver 7 about their reason behind the push. There's a lot of research for all sorts of medical health or mental health issues. Everything from anxiety to depression to cluster headaches and addiction, said Williams. And indeed, there are mounds of evidence and studies showing the positive benefits of magic mushrooms. Shrooms. <laughs> but Williams doesn't need those to be an advocate for them because they already saved his life. I had attempted suicide um, November 12th of 2015, and I think it helped me get out of my depression and it helped me with my PTSD. Williams is not alone. As reported earlier this year, a study published by a, or in the scientific journal uh, Neuropharmacology found that clinically depressed people had increased neural responses to fearful faces one day after a psilocybin-assisted therapy session, which positively predicted positive clinical outcomes whatever that means. Psilocybin-assisted therapy might mitigate depression by increasing emotional connection. This is according to neuroscientist and study author Lior Roseman, who is a PhD student at Imperial College London. This is almost the exact opposite of how standard antidepressants operate as SSRIs typically work to create an emotional blunting. This is unlike SSRIs antidepressant, which are criticized for creating in many people a general emotional blunting, noted Roseman. And I believe that psychedelics hold a potential to cure deep psychological wounds, and I believe that by investigating their neuro neuropsychopharmacological mechanism. Wow, say that 10 times fast. I had a hell of a time saying it once. We can learn to understand this potential, says Roseman. As previously reported, mushrooms and psychedelics used to be widely accepted as a treatment for many ailments until the government moved in to stop the expansion of human consciousness. Yeah, because if you become conscious, then you can't be fooled. And you cannot be this 
unwitting slave. In the 1940s, Western medicine began realizing the potential for psychedelics to treat addiction and psychiatric disorders. Tens of thousands of people were treated effectively, and psychedelic drugs were on a fast track to becoming mainstream medicine. But the beast of oppression reared its ugly head. Uh-huh. In 1967 and 1970, the UK and US governments cast all psychedelic substances into the pit of prohibition. People were waking up to the fact that governments intended to keep the world in a state of war. That governments were working to keep the populace sedated under a cloak of consumerism. The collective mind expansion of the era came to a screeching halt under the boot and truncheon. As John Vibes, ooh, excellent last name, dude. As John Vibes pointed out in January, a study actually confirmed the fear of authoritarians and showed they have every reason to oppose legal mushrooms. According to the study from the Psychedelic Research Group at Imperial London College, published in the Journal of Psychopharmacology, psychedelic mushrooms tend to make people more resistant to authorita. Huh. They also found the psychedelic experience induced by these mushrooms also caused people to be more connected with nature. And if you have nature, you don't need authorita because mother nature has the last word anyway our findings tentatively raise the possibility that given in this way psilocybin may produce sustained changes in outlook and political perspective here in the direction of increased nature relatedness and decreased authoritarianism this is according to researchers Taylor Lyons and Robin L. Carhart Harris. Now, as people share information globally, instantaneously, on a scale unstoppable by the state, we are resuming the advancement of medical research on psychedelic substances. Scientists are challenging the irrational classification of psychedelics as Class A in the UK or Schedule 1 in the US, and they characterized as having no medical use and high potential for addiction. See, and this is why whenever you hear something from those that are members of the leeches that be, you know, the ones that they produce nothing, they just suck lifeblood from everyone else, when you listen to whatever they say, what they're saying is exact opposite of what they're doing. That's just the way they operate. So once you get that in your mind and you realize that we're going to have World Peace Day, go, go somewhere safe, like to your bank blanket fort and grab your colors and grab someone that you might enjoy time in the blanket fort with. <laughs> just saying. Because, yeah, when they, when they say World Peace Day, that may be P-I-E-C-E, -E, not P-E-A-C-E. -E. <laughs> mm. So, while the stigma associated with mushrooms has been perpetrated by those who wish to keep them illegal, to keep society in a constant state of obedient mediocrity, in reality, they are extremely safe. In fact, a major study last year declared magic mushrooms to be the safest recreational drug. Of an astonishing 120,000 participants from 50 nations, researchers for the Global Drug Survey found the percentage of those seeking emergency treatment for ingesting psilocybin-containing hallucinogenic mushrooms to comprise just 0.2% per 10,000 individuals. Rates of hospitalization for MDMA, alcohol, LSD, and cocaine were an astounding five times higher. Which five times higher puts that at, doesn't that put that at 1%? Yeah, see, it's how they word it. Be careful how these things are worded. 
Magic mushrooms are one of the safest drugs in the world, according to the Global Drug Survey founder and consultant addiction psychiatrist Adam Winstock. And noting, he's also noting the biggest risk users face is misidentification, ingesting the wrong mushroom, not the psychedelic fungus itself, which see if you have people that know what they're doing and they are dispensaries where, I mean, you still have to be careful because, yeah, California is using nasty ass um, herbicides. You don't need herbicides for weed. Oh, well. So, after 40 years, it appears that another brick in the wall of prohibition is beginning to crumble in the face of science and logic. And there may be hope for humanity after all. And I think, I really think, just from some of the discussions I have had with people over the last few days, I see the hope there. There is a glimmer. And it's pretty freaking cool. And this is just even more awesome sauce. Awesome. I know people that have tried shrooms. And I was supposed to try them. And then, yeah. Things happened to where the shrooms were no longer available. So... <laughs> Oops. Okay. What is that? Dulce, New Mexico, or is that or Dult? How do you say that? <laughs> That's right, Grimmy. They're magic. Fuck you. There's your first f bomb of the night. It's been a while since I've done that. Let's see. A quaint little town with a population just under three thousand. Ah, cool. And they have a secret underground alien base. How fun is that? Hmm. Okay, put this over here on the effing site. Shrooms. <laughs> I have, you know, um, your taste, your dietary tastes do change over time. They actually I've read some research where they say about over a seven year time period you can pretty much figure that um your tastes are going to change along the way, whether it's, you know, something that you really enjoyed now you no longer like or, you know, something that you really did not like now you really enjoy. So I have learned I have acquired a taste for shrooms. Now I I never really liked mushrooms. But I really have acquired a taste for this. Wait a minute here. Don't give me that. Thank you. Put this over here in in the aralumanum or in the not the aralumanum. Ephensite. Yeah. The Hollywood Reporter celebrates the triumph of the beta male. All righty. Beta male with their hands in someone else's pocket. That's just not right. You know, if you're going to be playing pocket pool, play with your own pocket, okay? That's d Don't be, ooh, uh, get a room. <laughs> okay. Now, um... This is from over on Mines. Uh, da -da. It is Cogs in the Machine, The Willing Slaves. Are you starting to kind of sort of see the thread here? We're being fashioned like the clay goyim into certain shape or form that the masters and rulers want us to become and reflect this shape and behavior onto what society is. We are made into their vision of the new man, less authentic, less aware, therefore more unconscious in the living, like a robotic goyim living out there, uh, living out their will as our own will. Most of us don't think anarchy or freedom is possible because we t 
tacitly accept this programmed Goyim-like shaping of our lives and consciousness, of our worldview and self-view. The masters and rulers, through their manipulation and deception and mind control, have conditioned us into a certain mold, shape and form. Mold, spores, fungi. <laughs> yeah. and to fit into the f into and feed the systemic golem of the current way of life we are being constructed as individual golems to reflect and continue to construct the larger general golem of the system and establishment we become cogs in the wheel Now, I had to click on that link so that I can... This is from Luminous Sovereign. So, to survive, we need to engage in the economic survivability of some kind. Nothing is free. We have to provide for ourselves. But does that mean we need to have coercive systems in place that force us to engage in economic exchanges? Can't we choose to be free from this, to live without this system? For example, off the grid? Well, we are also prevented from being freer if we choose, or as all land is owned and must be indentured through the coercive tax schemes that mean we can't live free off the land as any other animal in existence can. We must pay tribute to our masters and rulers, the archons, and the opposite of an anar anarchonic, anarchonic anarchy. Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, our constructability or our ability to construct, create, manifest, and generate into reality is directly towards the available market of employment to provide us with monetary compensation for work done. True, some people create new avenues and find investors or borrow money to make it happen, but the system is still trying to extract something from them as well like taxes. We have degrees of freedom, but not full freedom within moral law. We could be putting our time, attention, and energy into truly furthering humanity and our own lives, but we're being directed or channeled as a current into specific directed avenues towards an end people do not see. We are conditioned through outcomes based or through outcomes based education to go along certain predetermined pathways for what we do that further the social systemic model in place. We are being fashioned like the clay golem into a certain shape or form that the masters and rulers want us to become. So, what is that? Okay. So, if you are controlled and wasted potential, many jobs are useless and only provide a market for imbalanced reciprocal exchange of currency in order to allow for each person involved in an aspect of the social system to continue to survive within the system. I say imbalanced because both, uh, both because of wage disparity and in corporatocracy and because of our conditioned valuation of goods and services through advertising that uses our attention to channel us into buying certain things. No one can own anything outside of the system. You might think this is false, but it isn't. Even if your property isn't owned by the banks from your debt, if you don't pay various taxes, your property will be taken from you. You never actually own 
anything in the system. It's only contingent upon your continued compliance with various extortion and coercion rackets. No one can use land to live independently because you have to pay tribute to the system for the right to use that land. Therefore, you can't grow your own food freely, you can't live in your own home freely, and you ultimately can't survive if you do not integrate into the system because then you won't have any money to pay for the things that are required to live as a serf, not truly owning anything for your own survival. No one can survive outside of the system because of the coercive requirement to continually pay for the right to own something. Everyone needs to be involved in obtaining money of some kind in order to pay the fees to live life. They harness our human potential as universal con constructors and channel our energy into their pockets. The system does not allow for a proxy of freedom. The freedom of exploitation, plunder, production, and consumption to perpetuate the system of control. Those who learn how to work the system and its control fulfill their desires and get the control and comfort that this system of dependency provides. Feeding the golem of the system gets you on the top, above others, and more in control of the fulfillment of your wishes, wants, and desires. It's very appealing for many degraded consciousness that get indoctrinated into perpetuating the system. They want to feed and defend the golem of the system. And yet we are universal constructors. Within the system, one constructor unit or person is capable of being placed into a particular position as a cog in the machine or a hamster wheel of control and repetition. The units perform their duties to ensure the operation of the golem system. The units become constructors of a particular type, but any of them is universally capable of filling a position as a cog in some area. Humans are an effective work machine. We are universal constructors for the systemic way of life to perpetuate. We still have a good degree of freedom to change things, but this is part of what keeps up the illusion of real freedom. For example, if our condition was less, less optimal and we had even more oppression like other people face and have faced in the past of humanity, then we would more easily see the reality of control over our lives compared to the less obvious current condition. The victim of mind manipulation does not know that he is a victim. To him, the walls of his prison are invisible, and he believes himself to be free. Aldous Huxley. I see y'all are flashing over here. I'm going to get to the top of this, and I'm there's more to this little thought process. What? A very depressing story that kind of... No, I don't want to buy a truckload of automatic weapons, hon. I really don't. And, you know, I, I disagree, and maybe I need to read further on this, but I really do disagree with the premise that you there is no way out of this because I really do think there is a way out of this, but it has to be... Each individual has to find their own way. And number one, each individual has to stop saying, well, he's not doing it. Well, why aren't you making him? You know, each individual needs to be responsible for themselves. Take care of their own damn shit first. Don't you worry about that other guy. Unless he's coming over and messing with your shit, don't you worry about him. You deal with your stuff. Let them deal with theirs. Oh, there is, ah, I scrolled down a little bit farther. The way out. 
Ah, the ultimate tyranny in a society is not controlled by martial law. It is controlled by the psychological manipulation of consciousness through which reality is defined so that those who exist within it do not even realize that they are in a prison. They do not even realize that there is something outside of where they exist. That's from the bringers of the dawn. So, there is hope for change. To recognize our potential, to see the reality for what it is, and work to improve it. We have a high degree of freedom, but we are being limited in our potential by the limitation in our vision to see reality correctly. If we want to change something, we first have to see and recognize it for what it is. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the old model obsolete. Buckminster Fuller, and that is true. Fighting against something never gets you ahead because all you're doing is giving energy to it. You are focusing your attention and your energy fighting against it. Whereas if you develop something that is beneficial for you, that you wish to work toward, that's how you get rid of the old. How you get rid of the not beneficial is you work toward. Don't fight against, work toward. We can imagine a positive, better way to live a new way to exist that differs from what we're conditioned to currently accept are, lim are the limits of our potential. We have a lot of potential and we really do. We are co-creators. The power that can still be overturned by us creating new models to live by. The more people that live and lead a new way, the more the old ways fade in influence power and control over people. Yes. Oh. See you later, Vinny. Enjoy. I I want Yep. Oh, you already exited. There you go. Way to go, Frumpy. I am in the process of exiting as well. I was actually with talking with someone yesterday about um, finalizing the gray water system. So, mama, 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 what, 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 Dulcie, huh? Okay. Did I put that over there? The Minds blog? Yes, I did. Okay. I'll put this over here on Effen site as well. I like Luminous Sovereign over on Minds. They make me think, which is wonderful. You know, keep the cobwebs drifting around and connecting and all that fun shit. But um, don't necessarily agree with. But in, yeah, it's one of those don't stop too soon. Keep reading. Keep reading. Oh, well. I stopped too soon. I needed to finish reading. And there's lots of links below that, too. Videos and all that other fun stuff, if they're still on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, where do I want to go? Um, I haven't checked out my pocket. Um... Dun, dun, dun. Okay, the benefits of cinnamon on plants. I'm going to have to, I need to read that one yet. But, let's go to this one that Java Doctor sent to me. It's from gardeningknowhow.com. Antidepressant microbes in soil. How dirt makes you happy. I know I have a good time playing in the dirt. But, you know, I'm just a kid at heart. So, there you go. Prozac may not be the only way to get rid of your serious blues. Soil microbes have been found to have similar effects on the brain and are without side effects and chemical dependency potential. That is 
if you do not take into account all the shit that they're spraying us with. So if you want to learn how to harness the natural antidepressant in soil and make yourself happier and healthier, here's how. You just make yourself dirty. Go play in the dirt. Natural remedies have been around for untold centuries, and these natural remedies included cures for almost any physical ailment as well as mental and emotional afflictions. Ancient healers may not have known why something worked, but um, they simply did that. Modern scientists have unraveled the why of many medicinal plants and practices, but only recently are they finding remedies that were previously unknown and yet still part of the natural life cycle. Soil microbes and human health now have a positive link, which have been studied and found to be verified. So did you know that there's natural antidepressants in soil? It's true. It's a Mycobacterium vacia. And it's a substance under study and has indeed been found to mirror the effects on neurons that drugs like Prozac provide. <clears throat> Excuse me. The bacterium is found in soil and may stimulate serotonin production, which makes you relax and happier. I like playing in the mud. Um, hoodie doody waddy. Get rid of the blues. Listen. To, oh, thank you, Graham. To get rid of the blues, listen to the blues. Okay. Um. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometimes I have to be in the mood to listen to the blues, but I have to be in the mood to listen to heavy metal. I have to be in the mood to listen to Enya. I have to be. It's just one of those things. My it depend. I'm very moody. <laughs> Usually they're happy moods, but yeah, I tend to be very moody. Okay, so this bacterium is found in soil and may stimulate serotonin production, which makes you relaxed and happier. And studies were conducted on cancer patients and they reported a better quality of life and less stress. And that, I think, is why my Auntie Wanda was so happy until they put her, you know, well, she wound up having to go to the hospital because, yeah, she was, but she was always out in the yard playing with her flowers, playing in the dirt good for her till that last little stretch the lack of serotonin has been linked to depression anxiety obsessive compulsive disorder and bipolar problems bacterium appears to be a natural antidepressant in the soil and has no adverse health effects these antidepressant microbes in the soil may be as easy to use as just playing in the dirt, which is why I say when I'm going out to work in the yard, I'm going out to play in the yard, because I really am. I mean, yeah, you get sweaty, I get stinky, I get blisters, all that, but I'm out playing in the dirt. I enjoy the hell out of it. Most avid gardeners will tell you that their landscape is their happy place. And the actual physical act of gardening is a stress reducer and mood lifter. Uh-huh. And weeds that are stubborn wind up getting called names of people that really irritate me. I've pulled an awful lot of San Fran Nan Pelosi's and dangleberries. I just, I, I keep pulling them weeds. <laughs> the fact that there is some science behind it adds additional credibility to these garden addicts' claims. I'm not a garden addict. I just really enjoy playing in the dirt. The presence of a soil bacteria antidepressant is not a surprise to many of us who have experienced the phenomenon ourselves. Backing it up with science is fascinating, but not shocking to the happy gardener. Um, mycobacterium antidepressant microbes in the soil are also being investigated for improving cognitive function, Crohn's disease, and even rheumatoid arthritis. So, how does dirt make you happy? Well, antidepressant microbes in the soil cause cytokine levels to rise, which result in the production of higher levels of serotonin. 
The bacterium was tested both by injection and ingestion on rats, and the results were increased cognitive ability, lower stress, and better concentration on tasks than a control group. Gardeners inhale the bacteria, have topical contact with it, and get it in their bloodstream when, there's, when they are cut or any other pathway for infection. The natural effects of the soil bacteria antidepressant can be felt for up to three weeks if the experiments with the rats are any indication. So get out and play in the dirt and improve your mood and your life. Thank you ever so much, Java Doctor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I have a really good excuse. I can say it's scientifically proven. And <laughs> well, when you put it like that, Grimmy. <laughs> and in your mood. Woo! Yeah, I just, wow, okay. <laughs> You are silly. Almost as silly as me. You got to work at it a little bit. Yes, Tom, I see you sent me a message. Um. Oh, thank you, Tom. Okay. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Hi, Darwin. I see you over here on Fakey Book. Okay, let's do one more before I go to the pig. <clears throat> this is from AwarenessAct.com. NASA confesses to dosing Americans with airborne lithium and other chemicals. Now, this is from August of 2016, but hey, it's been around a while, people. Start opening your eyes. Although there are more and more people that are opening their eyes. So if you don't know about chemtrails by now, or if you're a skeptic, we have various articles on the subject that should you should check out. There's recently a, a video that's been circulating around of a NASA employee admitting that lithium is being sprayed in the atmosphere. The NASA employee, uh, Douglas E. Rowland, admits that lithium is being used and sprayed into the atmosphere and in the video he also says it is harmless to the environment. Yeah, right. Lithium is a pharmaceutical drug that is used to treat people with manic depression or bipolar disorder. The medications alter how we think by changing the levels of serotonin and noripiphrine. What? Okay, whatever that are secreted by the endocrine system. Lithium strongly alters the brain system. Yet the NASA, never a straight answer, employee in the above states that it's, it's not dangerous and does not harm the population. Uh-huh. Doctors who regularly prescribe this medication for the mentally ill have said that it is dangerous because it's hard to figure out the proper dosing. So the logical thoughts would be that spraying copious amounts of lithium into the air via, via aerosol is not safe, especially for people who do not need it. And some of the side effects are excessive urination, seizures, suicidal thoughts, fever, confusion or hallucinations, swelling of the hands and feet, diarrhea or vomiting. Oh, wow, doesn't that sound lovely? I saw a commercial the other day while I was sitting at the, in the waiting room at the dentist's office, and they were talking about um, something for athlete's foot, I think is what it was. But when they started going through the list of side effects, known side oh. Yeah, known side effects to this thing. And in rare occasions, death can occur. What the? For athlete's foot. What the hell? Oh, well, as well as those, <clears throat> there are many more. But wait, there's more. And NASA's official stance on the practice is, the project is studying neutral and charged particles in the ionosphere and how each affects the way the others moves, resulting in the currents in the region. 
the various matter, because of all of our communications and GPS satellites, sends signals through the ionosphere. A disturbed ionosphere translates into disturbed signals, so scientists want to know just what causes the ionosphere to behave in specific ways. It does that because you're putting all kinds of nasty shit in there. Even the ios ionosphere can be bipolar, north and south. Uh, <laughs> it can be depressed. That's a low pressure system. I prefer, the, well, moving along. Apparently, the corroboration for this information given to the NASA employee in the video is uh, code 8440. RMMO, which states the exact purpose of using Wallops flight facility to launch a rocket containing lithium thermite. Oh, joy, oh, bliss. Lithium M thermite. Yay. The purpose, primary purpose of this mission was to test the loading methods for lithium canisters to be flown in, on the upcoming Kudeki missions and to verify their functionality under sounding rocket launch and spaceflight conditions. Wow. Apparently, uh, they've also been dumping lithium into our skies since the 1970s. How lovely. This goes on and on and on, and I'm just really, really tired of the on and on and on and nastiness. It's going to make me cranky, and I don't like being cranky. Hi, RLM Fluky. Um, what? Okay, take the risk of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness, truth, beauty, and wisdom will come to you. Ah, why, thank you, Miss Kate, for that Christopher Hitchens. Awesome. Snakes are lurkers. Yeah. Last year, I was, last summer, I was working out in the garden, and I saw something as I was weeding in my potatoes. And I reached in, and I went, oh, wait a minute here. That says, that's not right. So I went and got my rake, and I kind of moved, and... Yeah, a snake had shed its skin in my potatoes, and it's like, huh, I was creepied out. <laughs> so, me and, mm, I, I get along really good with Jim Stafford. I don't like spiders and snakes. I do not, I know all God's creatures are here for a reason. I'm going to just assume that their reason is for me to go, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Go away. Leave me alone. You know, so long as snakes and spiders stay away from me, I will stay away from them. That's kind of the way it works. And, hey, you know what? Same holds true for any kind of gooberment or authorita idiot asshole. So long as they stay away from me, I will stay away from them. It works. It's a peaceful coexistence. So you stay away, I'll stay away. Okay, over here on the pig, the word of the day is militant. <laughs> That's the middle ground between terrorist and freedom fighter, and it's someone whose um, motives, but not their methods, you deem okie dokie. Really? Okay. In the quotable quotes section, Everything we get outside of the free gifts of nature must in some way be paid for. The world is full of so-called econom economists who in turn are full, are, are full of schemes for getting something for nothing. They tell us that the government can spend and spend without taxing at all, that it can continue to pile up debt without ever paying it off, because... We owe it to ourselves. That's from Henry Hazlitt. Thank you, Henry Hazlitt. What? Okay, in their tasty tidbits, I gotta check this shit out. Apparently, in the moon battery section, macaroni and cheese marketed as cure for global warming. What the... What, you won't fart when you eat it? Excuse me. 
You ain't been around my family. <laughs> Life on Earth is not doomed after all because General Mills is marketing a brand new macaroni and cheese that can save the planet from global warming. Ta 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 ta! Apparently, on the box of macaroni and cheese that will launch this month, the name of the farmer who grew the wheat used to make the pasta, Nate Powell Palm, uh, who has a farm outside Bozeman, Montana, is printed on the front. The manufacturer, Annie's Inc., wanted to highlight the fact that Powell Palm is using regenerative farming practices a series of steps that go farther than what's required for an organic label and that could help fight the climate change by sequestering carbon in the soil. Carbon is only 3% of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide. Sorry. I think that's, yeah, like 3% of the atmosphere. In our world, carbon dioxide makes plants grow. Yes, it does. They breathe it in. But in the alternate reality inhabited by people who believe in liberal ideology, CO2 makes it too warm outside. Fortunately, they can stabilize the climate with macaroni and cheese because it's cheesy. The brand, which was purchased by General Mills in 2014, is already known for using organic ingredients, but it wanted to go further. Regeneratively regeneratively farmed ingredients are farmed with more holistic set of practices uh, that can promote soil health, increase biodiversity, and pull carbon from the air. You don't want to pull it from the air. You want the plants to be able to breathe it in. Apparently the words organic and sustainable were no longer separating fools from their money. So now we have regenerative. And this helps explain what the new buzzword means to the extent it means anything. Apparently Powell Palm rotates his wheat crop with golden peas, which are also used to make the flour for the pasta, boosting the protein content. The diver or a diversity of crops makes the soil healthier than just growing wheat because wheat takes nitrogen from the soil and peas help replenish it. Livestock also graze in the field on rotation, adding more nutrients to the soil with manure. The farm also uses cover crops rather than letting the soil sit bare after harvest, so the roots of the plants help hold the carbon in the soil. Okay, that's called rotation farming, and there's a lot of people that do that. This is not anything new. So, if you don't like mac and cheese, you can save the planet by purchasing other products. Oh yeah, go out and buy something else. Patagonia's food brand, Patagonia Provisions, launched a beer made with Kernza. It's a grain that helps sequester carbon with its unusually long roots. And Cascadian Farmer, another General Mills brand, also wants to incorporate Kernza into cereals and snacks. The North Face launched a climate beneficial beanie made from wool that came from sheep on a ranch that uses regenerative grazing principles. In the case that voluntary efforts fail to hold temperatures in place, government coercion may be required. All citizens will be required to wear climate beneficial beanie, perhaps with propeller on top to regeneratively energi uh, generate energy from the wind. How about they have the propeller on their backside so whenever they break wind, you can tell and they can regenerate energy. Hmm. All righty. So. Huh, apparently a guy was was um, convicted of public sexism as well. Y'all need to come over here to uh, the pig because he's got some really interesting stuff over here. Hmm, okay. Now, this date in history, finally. Or maybe not finally. Um, the 9th of March, 1893, Congo cannibals go on a rampage, kill thousands of Arabs. Where are they now? 
when we could use them. Uh, apparently, something didn't sit well with them. <laughs> Maybe they got a really bad case of indigestion. This date in history, the 9th of March, 1897. Cleveland Indians fans start calling the team Indians. 18 years later, the league stops fighting this fate accompli. So, and yeah, now they're saying, that's derogatory. You need to stop doing it. It's disrespectful. Oh, God, pull up your panties. And finally, the 9th of March, 1964, demonstrating one of the reasons Detroit is called the Motor City, Ford Motor Company gets one right when it rolls out the first Ford Mustang. 1964, I did not know that. I had a chance to buy a 1967 Mustang Fastback. I had the cash and everything, and my mom wouldn't let me do it, and so I spent the cash. <laughs> Being your typical not-so-intelligent teenager. Oh, well. It probably, well, I know, I'm still here, so it obviously worked out for the best, at least for me, because I'm still here. So, um, da -da -da -da. where do I want to go now? Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da -da. Argumentation ethics. Ah, I I see a Calvin and Hobbes picture, so it's like ah, cool. Okay, I'm I'm looking in my pocket, and I think I will go to this one on benefits of cinnamon. Cinnamon. This is also from gardeningknowhow.com. Yes. Um, oh, 1964 and a half was the first Mustang. Thank you, Grimmy. Uh, ew. Ew. Uh, Grimmy, you know, if I would have done that, there would have been two movements. Feet and bowel. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. For those of you that aren't in the RLM chat, Grimmy says that he once picked up a bale of hay and there was a big old rattler under it. I would have, it would have, mm-hmm. He's a young whippersnapper, Rob Works. Okay. Back to this article. Benefits of cinnamon on plants and using cinnamon for pests, cuttings, and fungicide. Hey, cool. Cinnamon is a wonderful flavor addition to cookies and cakes and any number of other foods like my coffee. But to gardeners, it's so much more. This versatile spice can be used to help root cuttings to prevent fungus from killing small seedlings and even for keeping pests away from your home. Once you learn how to use cinnamon powder for plant health, you'll think twice about grabbing harsh chemicals for your gardening needs. I don't, I don't do harsh chemicals for gardening anyway. So, harshest thing I use for gardening is vinegar. That's the harshest thing I use for gardening. So, the benefits of the cinnamon on plants is widespread, and you may end up reaching for the spice almost daily. So, here are some of the common uses. For pests, if you have a problem with ants in your home or greenhouse, cinnamon is a good deterrent. Ants don't like to walk where cinnamon powder lays, so summer um, ant problems will be decreased. Use cinnamon for pests inside and outside your house. Uh, find their entryway and sprinkle cinnamon powder in the path. Cinnamon won't kill the ants in your home, but it will keep them from g um, coming inside. And if you have a problem with ants in your child's sandbox, mix a container of cinnamon powder with the sand. Mixing it well, the ants will steer clear of the sand. Also, diatomaceous earth will work for that. Um, 
and so will um gosh darn it not uh i had it cayenne pepper i use i actually use cayenne pepper and okay i use dawn dish soap um but cayenne pepper and dawn dish soap and um distilled water and uh, you put that on your your plants and it will keep the bugs away because the bugs don't like you know like on your tomato plants or that kind of stuff instead of using seven dust bugs don't like that cayenne on there so and the main reason you use dawn dish soap is because it kind of sort of you don't use a lot but it just enough to where it will kind of sort of break down the the wax coating on the leaves of your plant enough for the cayenne to kind of get into it so that when the critters come over not only walking on it but trying to chew on the leaves the leaves are a little bit warm for them they don't like that so cayenne pepper works really well for that too um, and cayenne pepper works really well for sprinkling around your house too um, cinnamon as a rooting agent is as powerful as willow water or hormone rooting powder I've never heard of hormone rooting powder a single application to the stem when the plant or when you plant the cutting will stimulate root growth in almost every plant variety to give your cuttings a quick start with the help of cinnamon powder pour a spoonful onto a paper towel and uh, roll the damp stem in, or s damp stem ends into the cinnamon Plant the stems in a fresh potting soil and the cinnamon will encourage the stem to produce more stems while preventing fungus that causes damping off disease. Ah! As a fungicide control um, or damping off disease is a fung fungus-based problem that hits small seedlings just as they begin to grow. Cinnamon will help prevent this problem from killing or by killing the fungus. It also works with other fungal problems exhibited on older plants such as slime mold and with deterring mushrooms in planters. What if you want shrooms? So, if you wish to take advantage of the cinnamon fungicide control, you do so by making cinnamon spray for your plants. You stir some cinnamon into warm water, allow it to steep overnight, strain the liquid through a coffee filter, and put the results in a spray bottle. Spray the stems and leaves of afflicted, affected plants and the, miss the potting soil in the plants if you have a mushroom problem. Cool! cool I may have to try that although I really do like my cinnamon for like food <laughs> but I may just have to try that what is this grim that you share holy smokes holy smokes is it that late oh that's a hell of a, that's that's my kind of evening grim <laughs> Pot, pizza, and Netflix. <laughs> PPN. I'm going to have a PPN night tonight. There you go. Okay. Ooh, how to grow a true cinnamon tree. Oh, no, I'm going to have to look at this. Uh, Ceylon Cinnamon Care, or How to Grow a True, True Cinnamon Tree. Hmm. Um, so, apparently this author keeps mentioning true cinnamon trees. Uh, what does that mean? It's the kind of cinnamon usually bought and used in the United States comes from C. cassia trees, and true cinnamon comes from Ceylon, Ceylon Cinnamon Growing. The botanical name is C. whatever, which is Latin for Ceylon. Ceylon was an independent country in the Commonwealth of Nations between 1948 and 1972. In 1972, the com 
country became a republic within the Commonwealth and changed its name to Sri Lanka. Ah! This island country in South Asia is where most true cinnamon comes from. I did not know that. And there are several distinctions between cassia and Ceylon cinnamon. Yes, there is. Ceylon cinnamon is light brown in color, is solid, thin, and cigar-like in appearance, and has a pleasant, delicate aroma and sweet flavor. Cassia cinnamon is dark brown with a thick, hard, hollow tube and less uh, subtle aroma and indifferent flavor, which cassia is not nearly as healthy for you as the Ceylon. Cassia can, if you get too much of it, it can start messing with your liver. So, how to grow cinnamon trees. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, they attain a height of between 32 and 49 feet. Holy shit! Young leaves are lovely with a pink hue and emergence... Uh, gradually turn to a dark green. The tree bears, well, you're not telling me how to grow them. So, the tree bears clusters of small star-shaped flowers in the spring, becoming small purple dark, or small dark purple fruit. And the fruit actually smells like cinnamon, but the spice is actually made from the bark of the tree. I did know that. It thrives in U.S. zones 9 through 11. It can survive frosts down to 32 degrees. Otherwise, the tree will need protection. So, in other words, I can't grow it where I live. <laughs> um, damn it. Well, well, I'll go ahead and share this. Somebody else may be able to grow it. I can't, yeah. Manzanita is a very nice bark, too. Ah, okay. Thanks, Grimmy. I did not know that. Cool. I will put this. No, I don't want to do that one. Let me go back. Well, shit, I'm almost, almost out of time. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair, and I know I've been kind of sort of off on off on and I may I may do so again later but um yeah <sighs> it's a freaker Friday and I'm fee-buttled <laughs> oh well I'm having a good time so be sure to stick around because later on this evening Grimner and Moose Girl will be on with the freakers ball I will be back tomorrow morning for me noon eastern time with flash a rooney dork for the dork table um, also, Saturday night, is it this weekend? I saw something earlier on Twitter, but I, do, I haven't looked at a calendar to know if that's really when this is supposed to happen. Uh, oh yeah, Daylight Savings Time begins on Sunday, March the 11th. Yada, 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 set your clock forward an hour. Blah, 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 blah. So, we're going to lose an hour. We're going to cut an cut a foot off of that blanket and sew it onto the other end and magically the blanket will be shorter or longer or what I don't know I don't know in any case don't forget to set your clocks wow I don't have to get up in the morning anymore <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it <laughs> oh well Sunday uh, at noon, Easter time, Grimner will be showing up, and he's going to play the blues, and uh, hopefully there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat. Then directly following Grimmy will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass out behind the woodshed. And he may actually start whooping on yo ass before you get behind the woodshed, because, you know, quite possibly you need it. <laughs> Also, Sunday evening, Gary Ellen Gigi's Boo with the Road Less Traveled. So, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. And also, don't, be sure to check out JJ's because I know he broadcasts um, over on webcom.co.uk playing some awesome tunage. So, go and check him out, too. Uh, let's see. What else is going on here? 
Um, nom, 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 nom. Let me see. Where do I want to go here? Yeah, that one. That's the one. Okay. I think I've run out of things to say. <laughs> Spring forward, fall back. Yep. Oh, an extra hour to get to the beach for sunset. Cool. Well, actually, it just means that I will be able to play outside a lot later. And, yeah. That's okay. That's true, Miss Kate. Work schedules don't care what time the sun rises. Although, I am not going to miss having to drive into the sun every morning. Trust me, I will not miss that. Okay, let's see. Do I have something else I can go to real quick? Fungi. Fungi. Oh, we'll go here. What the hell? Uh, how long is it? Not very long. Okay. I posted this over on Fakie Book, basically because I saw it on Fakie Book, and then I decided to go ahead and put it in my pocket. And uh, it's from Earth We Are One, or E-W-A-O dot com. And when I shared it over there, Gary L. popped in and, and said, yeah, it's that's not gender specific, which I agree. But the article is, strong women would rather be alone than spend their time with assholes. Captain Obvious! You know, and there's an awful lot of women out there that, you know, they are so afraid to be alone that they will spend time with Captain Asshole. So, because strong women aren't afraid to be alone, they don't need to date in order to be genuinely happy and at peace in life. This sounds simple and easy enough, but it really is a rare characteristic. In fact... It might have more to do with true freedom than any other single thing. When dating becomes selective rather than commonplace, it becomes more valuable and meaningful, and ironically, time spent not dating becomes more valuable, meaningful, and fulfilling as well. Indeed, the benefits of independence and dignity really can't be fully expressed in words alone. Of course, it's far easier to want to be a strong woman or to think about being a strong woman than it is to actually be one. Strong women must be able to realize when someone's attempting to deceive them and to realize when someone might already be deceiving them in some way. They must be aware of what the people they're interacting with say and do to other individuals aside from themselves, especially with regard to respect, kindness, and honesty. Yes, how someone treats you when they're in a good mood isn't nearly as telling as how they treat not only you, but others when they're not so perky and happy. Yet, actions must always speak louder than words. And words without accompanying actions should always fall deaf. It's important to remember that you aren't doing your partner any favors by staying in an unhealthy relationship and hoping that things or your partner will eventually change and improve. In the long run, all you'll have done is delay the inevitable and delay genuine happiness and peacefulness for both of you. Or, as Buddha once said, you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So why not spend as much of your own personal time and energy on something or someone that is capable of truly reciprocating your unique love and spirit? Why not devote that time and energy to finding a worthy partner? or to finding greater happiness and peacefulness as an individual. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being open to dating, but being entirely happy single. In fact, almost everything about this ideology or philosophy is right. This is why strong women don't waste time or energy on assholes, at least not after an asshole has been identified as one. 
or at least no more than is absolutely necessary before indefinite separation. So strong women and strong men, maybe we should say strong individuals, know that being alone is exponentially better than being part of an unhealthy relationship. And more importantly, they also know that being alone has nothing to do with being lonely. And that is true. So y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. I will catch up with you later. I am going to go finish getting my supper started cooking for in the oven at least and do my blog and hopefully I'll catch up with you during the Freakers Ball. But until then, please remember, I truly do 